Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Swa Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamale Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pachari Nanya Vrsesa Sunya Vadi Vastyatya De Sitarine Anshakalpa to Gusha Kripa Sindhu, Baby Chapatitanam, Pavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio, Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhunitananda, Sri Advaita Gadat, Har, Sri Vansari Gaur, Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare uh, 3.25.24 is the verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll continue in the series of verses starting with verse 17. We are now up to verse 24. And this is the uh, instructions of Kapila Day on pure devotional service. Tadete Sadhava Sadvi Sarva Sangha Vivarjitaha Sanghaste Svatya Te Partya Sangha Doshan Parahite. Translation, O oh my mother, O oh virtuous lady, these are the qualities of great devotees who are freed from moral attachment. You must seek attachment to such holy men for these, this counteracts the pernicious effects of material attachment. So this is spoken by Kapila Dev himself, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Kapila Muni here and advises his mother Devahuti that if she wants to be free from material attachment, should increase her attachment to the sadhus or devotees who are free, completely free from all material attachment. In Bhagavad Gita chapter 15, verse 5, it is stated, who is qualified to enter into the kingdom of Godhead? It is said there, near mama, moha, jita sangha doshaha. This refers to one who is completely freed from the puffed up condition of material possessiveness. A person may be materially very rich, opulent, or respectable, but if he at all wants to transfer himself to the spiritual kingdom back home, back to Godhead, then he has to be freed from the puffed up condition of material possessiveness because that is a false position. The word Mohan used here means false understanding that one is rich or poor. In the material world, the conception of one, that one is very rich or very poor, or any sense consciousness in connection with material existence is false because this body itself is false or temporary. A pure soul who is prepared to free, be freed from the material entanglement must first of all be freed from the association of the three modes of nature. Our consciousness at the present moment is polluted because of association with the three modes of nature. Therefore, in the Gita, the same principle is stated. It is Vajita Sangha Doshaha. One should be free from the contaminated association of the three material nature, three modes of material nature. Here also in the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is confirmed a pure devotee who is preparing to transfer himself to the spiritual kingdom is also free from the association of the three modes of nature. We have to seek the association of such devotees. For this reason, we have begun the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. There are many mercantile, scientific or other associations in human society to develop a particular type of education or consciousness, but there is no association which helps one to get free from all material association. 
If anyone has reached the stage where he must be free from all from this material contamination, then he has to seek the association of devotees, where Krishna consciousness is exclusively cultured. One can therefore become free from all material association. Because a devotee is freed from all contaminated material association, he is not affected by the miseries of material existence. Even though he appears to be in the material world, he is not affected by the miseries of the material world. How is it, how is it possible? There is a very good example in the activities of the cat. The cat carries her kittens in her mouth, and when she kills a rat, she also carries the booty in her mouth. Thus, both are carried in the mouth of the cat, but they are in different conditions. The kitten feels comfort in the mouth of his mother, whereas when the rat is carried in the mouth of the cat, the rat feels the blows of death. Similarly, those who are sadhava or devotees engaged in Krishna consciousness or transcendental service of the Lord do not feel the contamination of material miseries, whereas those who are not devotees in Krishna consciousness actually feel the miseries of material existence. One should therefore give up the association of materialistic people and seek the association of persons engaged in Krishna consciousness. And by such association, he will benefit in spiritual advancement. By the words and instructions, he will be able to cut off his attachment to material existence. Mm. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> And Sanatana Goswami approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, My dear Lord, what is the first duty of one who wants to become Krishna conscious? And Lord Chaitanya answered, Asatsanga Teyaga e Vaishnava Achar. Asat Sangha Tayagya Tiagya 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 Asat Sangha Tiagya Tiagya Vaishnava Achar. One must give up the association of the non devotees and take to the association of devotees. This is the foundation and the arena for cultivating our progress in spiritual life. Because in that association, we hear the glories of the Lord. We chant the glories of the Lord. We are inspired to remember the glories of the Lord. We serve the Lord and his devotees. Uh, everything that is inclusive is found in complete, uh, complete sense of the self in the association of devotees. <clears throat> so devotees have to seek out association. Prabhupada, in order to make a point, uh, he said, he asked us, not even asked this, he said, there are three things that are most important in the process of Krishna consciousness. And then he said, association, association, association. Wanting to make a point, he illustrated the emphasis in thrice. In, um, in Vedic literature, also in Vedic uh, what we say grammar, if you want to emphasize something as absolute, then you mention it thrice. Once, twice, thrice. So in that way, it becomes the only point of consideration. There is no second point. So association with devotees is the foundation, and as we mentioned, 
the area where you can process your Krishna consciousness very readily and very steadily and very uh, progressively. <clears throat> and so this uh, verse is emphasizing that one should seek attachment for those who are free from all material attachment. Attachment cannot be given up. Attachment simply has to be transferred to something positive, something spiritual. In that way, that attachment will elevate one. No one can be freed from attachment. Sometimes we run across class, a class of spiritualists who say you have to be free from all attachment. We say the same thing, but we, we categorize that free from all material attachment or those attachments that fall within the category of the three modes of material nature. And in other words, those activities that are outside of devotional service. <clears throat> So these activities, um, what we say, cause one to stay connected to the material energy. And as long as you're connected to the material energy, you have to accept the dualities of material energy. There are people, and practically, practically the whole world is under the illusion, you can have happiness without distress in this world. That is not possible because the nature of the material energy is that it's dualistic. Wherever there is one side, there is the other side. How it appears or when it appears is incidental, but it is there. We can use so many examples how one gets something they like and they know they feel they can enjoy and may also find some satisfaction and happiness in it. But then again, after some time, it changes. And there is the other side, the distress. Attachment to loved ones is like that also. There is happiness and there is a kind of distress that comes when the separation comes or when difficulties come in that relationship. So that's an example. You have a car, you say, oh, I have this nice car. It takes me many different places very quickly. But then again, you have to pay for it. You have to repair it. You have to pay for the gas. You have to insure it. You have to worry about it so it doesn't get stolen. So there is the always, this is the other side of this so-called happiness that we take on. And that's just the nature of this world. So no one can be freed from the dualities as long as they, are stay, they stay within the conception of material world. So here it says one has to become, one can be free from the pernicious effects of material attachment and as Prabhupada illustrates, the miseries of material nature. What are the miseries of material nature? And they're mentioned as three outstanding ones within the three categories, there are subcategories. But the three are those miseries that come by way of our mind, distress, anxiety, uh, mental disturbances, uh, mental, uh, what we say, lack of cooperation of the mind. <laughs> That's one form of distress. Bodily distress, we all know that one, doesn't need any explanations. Uh, distress coming from other living entities. There are numerous other living entities who give us trouble, even people and living entities we don't know. We could, you know, go to sleep at night and get bit by a bed bug and find ourselves with a terrible, difficult sore, which causes 
great discomfort. So bed bugs, all kinds of other insects give you trouble also. There are reptiles, there are, what else? There are government, government agencies who are always giving you trouble. They're trying to take all the money that you make. And so this is, you know, this is uh, called Aribaltic miseries coming from other living entities. And then we have Aridaivika, pestilence, too much heat, too much cold, various types of inclement, inclement weather. I was just listening to something really hilarious. It wasn't hilarious. It's hilarious when you when you hear it, but when you read, when you understand, it's something that's going to they're going to try to implement. You realize it's not so hilarious. I saw a news report yesterday. Well, there they wanted. Now they're starting to think of what is called climate lockdown. <laughs> this is the newest thing. President Biden in America is speaking about a climate lockdown, climate control lockdown. This is the whole thing. They think that the climate is uncontrollable. And therefore, there is difficulties in the weather and so many things that causes, that's being caused by the way we live, pollution, uh, various types of, I don't know, they mostly can mostly air pollution and food pollution so many other. so they want to now blame it on the people rather than the the <laughs> blame it on the people rather than on the industries that produce all this stuff and they want to lock people down and curtail their use of cars and various other activities which are considered to be polluting the environment or, pollu or causing climate inclemency. Completely ridiculous because the climate is under the hands of God. It's, <laughs> it's not under the hands of the <laughs> materialists. They can't control the climate. They can live in accordance with the laws of material nature, and then climate automatically presents itself as something supportive rather than something disturbing. But because people are sinful, because we are ravaging the earth, we're ravaging each other while ravaging the earth, there's so much disturbance, disturbances in climate. <clears throat> And this is coming by the demigods. It's not coming by, it's a result of our sinful activities coming up through the immaterial energy given to us by the demigods, which are Krishna's agent. But now they're talking, well, we have to, we have to change the way people live. And uh, what's the word? Climate lockdown, climate control lockdown. This is the newest thing. If you haven't heard about it yet, it's coming. <laughs> uh, just to let you know ahead of time. Anyway, that's a that's a side point. But the point is that you know this is the miseries of the material energy. You can't get away from these things. The normal ones, but we've created so many things: drought, pestilence forest fires, these are all due to the, the, mis the, the way we live outside of the laws of material nature, outside of the direction given by the Supreme Lord for normal and happy life. So uh, one can be freed. Now it says here, one can be freed from these miseries when one takes shelter and hears from and associates with great souls. I think the example is holy men here, great devotees, holy men. They are freed from the material energy. They can also give you that 
same mercy when you associate with them, hear from them, and apply the knowledge that you receive in your day-to-day -day life in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So this association is very, very elevating. Because it's elevating, as is here, because the devotee is free from all materials. He is not affected by the miseries of material energy. Each and every one of us can come to that stage of being unaffected by material miseries. Uh, where, just like you'll see in the material world, uh, for instance, this lockdown in some places has caused people to revolt. It's just impossible for them to accept this. Of course, devotees don't like it either, but somehow or other we can adjust and still go on in our Krishna consciousness. But the materialists, their whole life is thrown upside down and so they don't tolerate it. Um, it's just, or to use a more simplified example, people plan a weekend in the summertime for some picnics, some outings, some fairs, some carnival, and they're all ready to go. They're excited all, all week about the weekend. And then what happens? It rains on the weekend <laughs> and the whole thing is drowned out. <laughs> so yeah, and then their whole weekend and everything that they were hoping for is no longer present. But devotees, we can chant Hare Krishna, whether it rains, or doesn't rain, whether it's hot, cold, whether there's earthquakes, whether there's sunny, pleasant weather, it doesn't matter. The devotees are not, uh, what we say, overly overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the effects of material energy. But you can also be more and more oblivious uh, to these effects as you become more and more transcendental in your, and that means association. So the Sadhu Sangha, as it's mentioned here, is um, very, very purified. And one can, there is no, as Prabhupada said, there is no, there's no scientific mercantile or any association that can free one from, you know, material contamination. And Prabhupada said, and this is why we have established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So for devotees can associate together. And that's, he mentions this also in the Nectar of Instructions in the fourth verse, where Rupa Goswami explains the six loving exchanges between devotees, which are to speak confidential subject matters, to hear confidential subject matters, to give a gift, to receive a gift, to give Krishna prasadam and to receive Krishna prasadam. These are the six loving exchanges between devotees as mentioned by Srila Rupa Goswami. In that particular purport, Srila Prabhupada emphasizes the importance of uh, establishing temples as the means to facilitate these six loving exchanges. Otherwise, we can worship without temples, but the temples facilitate association, they facilitate uh, the opportunities for people who are unaware of our process to get to become aware. So these temples are actually places where we can associate. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoi, Lava Mata Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. By hearing from great souls, so you see in Vedic culture, what was one of the most important spiritual processes is that devotees would gather together in a large group 
and hear transcendental knowledge spoken by a great song. What is Srimad Bhagavatam based on? It's based on that process where there was a meeting at Nami Sharanya where 88,000 sages attended that meeting and it was presided over by Sutta Goswami and facilitated by Sonika Rish. Both of these persons facilitated that process. And then later, it talks about Sukadev Goswami speaking to Maharaj Pariksit in a large assembly, which is the basis of the entire philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam, or which is the process by which Srimad Bhagavatam's knowledge has been revealed to the world. So you see how important and how much eager people would come. And Prabhupada would say, when you go to India and you hold a Pandal program, even today, you get thousands of people who come just to hear. People like to hear. And that Sangha is very efficacious in bringing about a spiritual consciousness, both in the association and in the knowledge that is being transmitted. So uh, we should also seek that. Um, there's no reason why the devotees can't associate together. Even today, during this present situation, we can always find opportunities to have activities in our home or if the temple is having activities, participate in these activities. This association is very, very uh, fortifying in all respects. It also helps one develop those qualities that are conducive for one's execution of devotional service, such as humility, tolerance, patience, and uh, pridelessness. All these you can find are easily and more readily developed in the association of devotees. So we cannot emphasize the, enough the importance of Sadhu Sangha. And especially as it mentions here, those the personalities who are great souls free from all, all the effects of material energy. Okay, so that is where we'll end here. Any questions or comments? Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a very nice class. The devotees, if there are any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, thank you very much for this, uh, this class. And uh, uh, as you spoke, it made me think about uh, this uh, topic of uh, attachment, detachment. And uh, sometimes I, I've heard that uh, actually, uh, if we become more regulated uh, and detached, that helps to uh, to be able to con control the mind more. And uh, it just made me wonder that uh, if it's, it's, uh, it means which, uh, what you said, that uh, we have to find uh, a higher taste in, uh, in being attached to something or how, how it works when it's about these rules and regulations. So like, uh, for example, sometimes it's difficult to get up early and it's kind of, um, I, I, I cannot really find the higher taste in it. 
and and how it works in this case or uh, is it really true that uh, detachment helps to to control the mind or the other way around or both is true yeah detachment will definitely control the mind in fact it's one of the most effective and most direct ways to keep the mind under control those who are attached to things in the material world they their mind is being controlled by the objects they're attached to. When we detach ourselves from that object, we pull, we pull that mind back and then we move it towards Krishna or devotional activity. But that detachment is very, is very direct, directly. And that's the, uh, that's the principles of the rules and regulations. The rules and regulations are meant to, to facilitate a, attachment to Krishna and detachment from everything else that is contrary to Krishna consciousness. So you have them too, you had those vidis and nishedas. So we should learn what are the activities that we develop attachment for, and we, at the same time, side by side, learn what we should avoid, which will cause the mind and senses to be diverted towards the material energy. So just like, for instance, the four regulative principles or the four regulative principles of freedom, they free us from the reactions of sinful activities and help to focus our consciousness on something transcendental. So yeah, you uh, actually uh, answered that question. Yes, the rules and regulations are meant for detachment. Now, I don't know um, if I should address your, your section of your question about rising, but we should try to be regulated in our activities of sleep. It's not only very um, essential in order to organize our day effectively, but at the same time, it is very healthy. When we are not regulated in sleep, our health is somewhat jeopardized. I just mentioned this example because uh, there are many, uh, how to say, uh, det detachments when, when it's easy to, to have the higher taste. Like, for example, if someone is uh, attached to eating, then, then it's uh, possible to, to engage it in eating, or I would say honoring prasadam. But uh, there are some some things which are not, not so easy to find uh, how to engage it in Krishna's service and how to find the higher taste. That's why I mentioned this, this example. Well, um, there, is certain, I, there, there are sinful activities, we, we avoid those. But if you can't engage everything, you should engage what you can engage. And That's I, it. You know, facility is there. You might you might not be able to engage everybody around you in Krishna consciousness, but at least you can engage some, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if I understood it uh, properly, but for example, these cases when when it's not so easy to find uh, how to engage it in Krishna conscious in in connection with Krishna, but. Uh, but we can put the effort here. Um, so in this, uh, this way, we can show Krishna that we are serious. So, so we can handle this, this way. You're referring, to, you're referring to things that can be engaged in Krishna consciousness, but you're, one is not so expert at doing it? Uh, no, I mean, when it's not, uh, not so, uh, yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> Well, you know, Krishna sees the endeavor. You make the effort, you make the effort. He, he's accepting the endeavor as the element of bhakti that you're offering. He gives the results, so not you. Thank you very much. It was really, really helpful to clarify this. If you're, if you're, I think you're thinking that if it doesn't come out in a certain way, then that, that, that 
principle of engagement is not right or, or faulty, but that's not, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. The endeavor itself is the, is the element where is what you offer to Krishna. You want to use all your time in Krishna conscious, but you're using, you're not, you're using some of it. So you try your best, that's all. Hopefully you learn how to use more and more of your time. Krishna is accepting, he says, As you approach me, I will reward you accordingly. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I, I, I try to, but uh, yeah, as last time I asked you about endeavors and uh, sometimes I have this feeling that, um, that I, I uh, just use it as an excuse that, oh, uh, it's so difficult, I'm not able to do it. And actually I might be able to do it. It's just sometimes I'm, I'm lazy and, and uh, it's easier what? to, Question is, is it your service or not your service? Mm -hmm. I, I would say my lifestyle. Oh, okay. Well, then, you know, that's a process where you learn how to use more and more things. You learn, that's more trial and error. But if you're lazy, then you won't get beyond a certain point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. I I just uh, listened to a class and uh, and uh, I, I I've heard in it that uh, sometimes we say that. Uh, so there there are some some people who are actually say that yeah they are atheists, atheists. And uh, sometimes it happens even amongst devotees that theoretically is someone not an atheist, but uh, psychologically uh, he or she is in a way that, uh, that uh, he, himself or herself is more important than, than God. And uh, yeah. I understand that we have to, uh, that this is a process, to, so we have to learn how to make uh, God more important, but uh, it's just so easy to make this this mistake that uh, sometimes uh, we could make. Yeah, that's yeah. More that's why it says. When I, what does Krishna say in uh, the Bhagavad Gita? Uh, there's a very nice verse, chapter two in the Bhagavad Gita, text sixty-four. Runda, are you? With us, 264 Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Maharaj. I think this verse is really nice. Krishna speaks it. Ragadvaisa bin Mukta is too visay and indri eyes to run out of the say of the head of Prasadamari guys to tea. But a person can be free from all attachment and virgin, and able to control his senses to regulative principles of freedom, can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. Regulative principles of freedom. Note that point. The regulative principles bring one to, this, to the point of a detachment. Really nice. It's, it's, wow. Yeah, just read this paraport and you'll get a little understanding. <laughs> it is already explained that one may externally control the senses by some artificial process, but until, until the senses are engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is every chance of, of a fall. Although the person in full Krishna consciousness may apparently uh, be on the sensual plane because of his being Krishna conscious, 
he has no attachment to sensual activities. The Krishna conscious person is concerned on, only with the satisfaction of Krishna and nothing else. Therefore, he is transcendental to all attachment and detachment. If Krishna wants, the devotee can do anything which is ordinary, ordinarily undesirable. And if Krishna does not want, he shall not do that, uh, which he would have ordinarily done, done for his own satisfaction. Mm, Therefore, yeah. there's a nice point there. Krishna wants to do, the devotee can do anything ordinary and undesirable, but if Krishna doesn't want, does not do anything which for his own satisfaction. Okay. Therefore to, uh, therefore, to act or not to act is within his control because he acts only under the direction of Krishna. The consciousness is the causeless mercy of the, of the Lord which the devotee can achieve in spite of his being attached to the sensual platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though one is attached to sensual enjoyment, if they act on behalf of Krishna, they can detach themselves from everything sensual. Regative principles of freedom. We have to know what are those principles and we have to know how to apply them. Really encouraging, yeah. Thank you very much for clarifying this. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Radhavi Nodini. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I have a problem. Yes. How, how can I help? Can you help me with this problem? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope so. I'm getting all the credit for the work you did on this uh, this uh, compilation of the history of uh, Kirtan and Niskan. Actually, you're the one who deserve it because everything is possible by your mercy. So I was sitting in sitting in Japa this morning in the temple, and Prahlad Nanda Maharaj comes up to me and he talk, and he says he mentions one senior devotee who read this compilation, and he was very eager to congratulate me and thank me for that, and I was thinking, oh no. Here we go. I'm getting credit for one I'm not supposed to get credit for. No, it's so, Guru Maharaj. It's really not not like that. <laughs> I uh, I remember when when I I was in full panic that how how will I do do this and I, I just remember that how I prayed to uh, pray to to Gornetai that please help me not to not to be an obstacle in your service and. Actually, so you're, you're the one who, who actually did it. So I, I was just a tool. Well, I, I asked you to do it, but you did it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's actually been uh, appreciated by so many senior devotees. So, so thank you. Yeah, it was done very scholarly and very systematically. Mm -hmm. So happy that that uh, everybody's pleased with this. I, I I just don't even know what to say. Well, anyway, just just to let you know, every time I get congratulations, congratulations, I think that it should I pass it on to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> Very much. It's really really your mercy. <laughs> Jai. I posted Varunda, Varunda, I posted it on the uh, 
on the conference a couple of days ago, if you look for it on the conference. Okay, Maharaj, sure. Thank you. You're on the conference? Uh, no, I think. You're not on our conference? Uh, I am on one group, uh, but uh, I, I don't know if that is the one. It's Chandramali's, Chandramali Swami googlegroups.com. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, she's not on the conference email. No. You put her on if she wants. Anyway. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. uh, devotees, are there any questions, comments, or realizations? Please go ahead. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, as I was listening to this lecture, I was thinking about the nature of the attachment that we should have to holy persons and whether that is the principle of uh, humble service and humble inquiry, which should be followed. Because I remember when I was in Mayapur, some of the senior ladies were just... Uh, in despair over a young lady who was so attached to her Guru Maharaj, she would follow him all over the place. She would travel country to country, wherever he was going. The Guru Maharaj was just disgusted. <laughs> and the ladies were asking me, what is her mental health problem? Why is she doing this? And she claimed, I'm attached to my Guru Maharaj. I want to follow him and learn from him. So can you define what is the nature of this? <laughs> You should have for holy men. <laughs> she, if, her, if, if he allows that, that's fine. But if he doesn't allow it, she shouldn't do it. Hmm. Well, the Guru Maharaj was she, not pleased with that kind of behavior. And he made it very clear that uh, the senior Mataji should tell this young lady to follow his instructions rather than follow him. Yeah, I've seen that before. It's, it's just a little bit, it's, it goes beyond the, uh, the spiritual, it goes into the sensual a little. So should that attachment for holy men, what is said here, should be on that same principle of Tadvidi Pranipatena, where humble service and humble inquiries and then following the instructions, should that be the attachment we are looking for now? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not based on physical proximity. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wanted yeah. to clarify that. Yeah. To be attached to here from your spiritual master is the essential principle of attachment. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a special sweetness in actually being in the presence of great souls because uh, of their purity, because of their realization, because of their um, advancement in Krishna consciousness. We, we gain simply by being in their presence. But the devotees have to learn both, Bani and Vapu. Okay. Bani can be there. I mean, Vapu can be there, but as Prabhupada said, Vapu is not necessarily always beneficial. Hmm. So, yeah, I think generally there's there's the there's the sensual part. I've seen it with many. I've seen it with at least th three spiritual masters that I know, uh, and it's always ladies who are following. It's not <laughs> it's not anyone else. Now there's this, uh, you know mixture of spirituality with 
and sense gratification mixed in. So that means be really careful even when we are associating in the presence of holy people to be very uh, clear in our minds that we are there to learn something and not for our own sense gratification. Right. Yeah, they say don't try to use the spiritual master for, for your own sense gratification. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, that's very important to know. Mm -hmm. Else? Mm -hmm. Devotees, is there any other question for Maharaj? Or any realization? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance for Gosh to Shri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Uh, I don't have any question, Guru Maharaj. I uh, just want uh, your blessings uh, to offer to Vrinda Mataji. Uh, today is Vrinda Mataji's birthday, Guru Maharaj. Um, I just want you to requ request you to offer, uh, um, give your blessings to her, Guru Maharaj. Well, congratulations. We give you the best wishes that your spiritual life will continue to be in such a way that you're always getting the mercy of Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Happy birthday, Vrinda Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. It's happy now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's happy, happy. I, I got to serve you today, Maharaj. What your little answer is. I'm mm -hmm. happy I got to serve you today. Thank you. You know, you know the tradition in India? <laughs> you know when somebody's birthday, what do they do on their birthday? In the West, it's just the opposite. In the West, everybody gives them gifts and tells them how wonderful they are. In India, the culture is that, you know, if it's your birthday, you give everybody else a gift on that day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Vedic <pretty> culture. <laughs> so I'm waiting for my gift. <laughs> Maharaj, anything, anything. Please, you tell me what I can give you. Anything. Else. <laughs> you are giving wonderful service, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for accepting my services, Maharaj. I'm very grateful to you for your association. Uh, I mean, I know I'm I'm doing many services, but I know I'm surviving in Krishna consciousness because of this service, Maharaj. I know I have re I've realized that. So thank you. Thank you. I think everyone is pleased. I know I am by your service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Today, best wishes. Thank you, Maharaj. So, uh, uh, let's see, Lavanya? Yes, good, Maharaj. I'm here. I'll give you the listing for the next four days for classes. Now, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're aware of it, 